Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain an American survival film called Frozen. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. The movie begins at a New England ski resort on Mount Holliston. Three friends, namely Dan Walker, Joe Lynch, and Dan's girlfriend, Parker O'Neill, have come to the mountains for a ski trip. Dan and Joe are childhood best friends who go on a ski trip every year as a tradition. Most of the time, Joe flirts with a female ski lift operator to get cheaper tickets, but this time a man stands in her place. The guys make Parker flirt with the operator and get them cheap tickets. While she is at it, Joe complains about Dan bringing his girlfriend to a boys only trip. It is evident he is not very fond of Parker. She doesn't even know how to ski, so Joe thinks it wouldn't be as fun. Dan apologizes, saying that he thought bringing her would be okay because they would get to bond. They finally get on the ski lift and set off for the top of the mountain. On their way, Joe criticizes Parker for smoking too much, making Parker throw an insult back at him. Dan is in the middle of the two, trying to handle the situation. All of a sudden, the lift stops working. People riding them complain in frustration. Parker acts calm but is scared of heights. Joe makes fun of her for it, while Dan tries to console her. Eventually, the lift continues working and they reach the top. While skiing, Dan and Joe are unable to have fun because of Parker being slow. She falls down every few minutes, annoying Joe even more. At night, they are back from the mountain and are staying in a resort. The boys talk over pizza about the failed trip. Joe suggests the two of them catch the last lift to the hilltop and ski like they used to. Parker overhears their conversation and apologizes for ruining their trip. Dan feels bad for her, so he asks her to join them again. Parker wants to stay in their room, saying she doesn't enjoy skiing anyway, but Dan insists. So, the three of them repack their gear and make their way to the lift. Just as they reach there, the operator turns the lift off. He is the same man who Parker had flirted with to get the tickets. The group asks him to let them go one last time, but the man laughs at them, saying they didn't even pay the full price the first time. Moreover, the lift is closing because of a storm, so they cannot turn it back on. The operator is absolute about not letting them go, but accepts when they offer him an extra hundred dollars. The group sets off on the lift, looking at the people below, skiing excitedly. Meanwhile, a coworker approaches the lift operator and tells him about the next week's schedule. The operator retaliates, saying that he will be off work at his brother's wedding the next week. He leaves the coworker at the lift to talk to the manager. Before leaving, he informs him that three people are still on the lift, so he shouldn't stop it until they come back. A while after the operator leaves, the man sees three people climbing up the mountain. He assumes that the people are the ones the operator was talking about and stops the lift, unaware that Dan, Joe, and Parker are still on it. At first, when the lift stops, the group thinks it is just a minor inconvenience. Joe yells in frustration, but everyone at the lift station has already left. Moreover, the temperature is dropping by the second, making the group shiver in the cold, despite being warmly dressed. They talk about worse ways they could die to keep them entertained, unaware of what is coming for them. They stay there for a few minutes, but start to panic when the lights go out. Now, they know that the lift didn't stop because of a malfunction, but someone has stopped it deliberately. They start to yell, hoping someone will hear them. Parker freaks out, saying that no one knows that they're here. But Dan believes that the lift stopped because of some power outage and they will be rescued soon. The couple begins to argue in a moment of panic. Parker suddenly remembers that it is Sunday and the ski resort won't open until next Friday. So if no one comes looking for them, they will be stuck for almost a week. The friends tell one another that they will be okay, but panic is visible in their faces. Sometime later, Joe has to pee, but with no other way, he puts the metal bar up and pees off the lift. Parker groans in disgust while Dan stays quiet. Then, suddenly, it starts to snow. The storm that the operator warned them about hits, adding to the group's trouble. Sometime later, a snowplow drives towards them, making the group wave and yell to get the driver's attention. The driver finally stops the vehicle right below the group. They are relieved to finally be rescued. But it turns out that man hasn't heard or seen them, and he stopped simply because of the snowstorm. He calls his superior, who tells him to come back quickly. So, the man turns his vehicle around while the group screams at him to stop. 
Unfortunately, he cannot hear them, because every character like this in every movie ever made like this is deaf. They throw their skiing gear at the man, but he doesn't notice them and eventually leaves. Sometime later, Parker takes her gloves off to smoke, but they accidentally fall off the lift. Now, the only way out for the group is for one of them to jump. Dan volunteers to do it and believes he will be fine since the ground is covered in snow. Genius. Joe tries to stop him, saying that they should wait till the morning, but Dan is adamant. Parker and Joe both repeatedly insist he quit. However, Dan throws his snowboard to the ground and jumps off the lift. Immediately upon hitting the ground, both of his legs are broken. The other two ask him if he is okay, but he only hears mumbling for a few seconds. Dan is horrified to see bones protruding through both of his knees. Now, there is no way he can make it down the mountain to get help. Parker throws her scarf at him so he can use it to stop the bleeding, but it lands on top of a tree. Wow, these kids are useless. Joe then makes a ball out of his scarf and throws it at his friend. It lands nearby, but when Dan tries to reach it, the bone protrudes out even more. After tying it around his legs, Dan asks Joe to pull himself up on the suspension cable to get to the nearest support tower. The towers all have ladders in them, which Joe can use to get downstairs. Joe hesitates, claiming that he can hardly do a pull-up, but agrees to do it for his best friend. Just then, they hear growling nearby. A pack of wolves have smelled the scent of Dan's blood and are coming his way. Dan freaks out and yells for help inviting the wolves even more. Joe gets on top of the lift but slips back into it because of the icicles. Just then, a wolf appears right in front of Dan and growls at him. Dan stays frozen, scared to do anything. Parker throws her snowboard at the animal and makes it go away. However, soon, he is surrounded by a whole pack of them. Dan realizes there is no way he can survive now. He asks Joe not to let Parker look down as the animals surround him. Joe holds Parker's face, crying as the creatures devour Dan. Sometime later, everything goes quiet. The only noise that can be heard is the howling of wolves in the distance. Parker blames Joe for asking Dan to jump earlier. Joe defends himself, claiming that he begged him not to. They get into an argument and start to blame one another for Dan's death. In the end, they just hold each other and cry. The night somehow passes as the two fall asleep. Parker wakes up in the morning with her hand around the metal bar, which she had grabbed while asleep. She tries to remove it, but her hand is frozen to the bar. She painfully loosens her grip as the skin of her palm tears off. The two have severe frostbite and cannot survive one more day on the lift. Joe suggests he try getting to the support tower again but Parker wants them to wait for a few hours and see if someone comes looking for them. A while later, Joe falls asleep and Parker embarrassingly pees on herself while crying. Who's gross now, Parker? When he wakes up, the two talk about different things in their life. Joe tells her how he and Dan met at elementary school. He claims that since Dan died trying to save them, they shouldn't let his death go to waste. Joe then gets on top of their seat again to try to make it to a support tower. This time, the icicles have melted, making it easier for him to move forward. However, as he steps on the seat, a screw of the bolt holding the chair to the cable becomes dangerously loose, which makes the chair rock. He somehow manages to get to the other chair, but his palms are bloodied because of the cable. Joe still doesn't give up and climbs up to the support tower, where a single wolf waits for them on the ground. Parker throws her ski pole to the ground to help Joe fight the wolf when he gets there. He then finally climbs down, only to be attacked by the animal. However, he gets his hands on the pole and manages to get it off of him. He quickly puts on the snowboard and heads down the mountain. Right behind, a pack of wolves follow him. Parker asks him to be careful as he disappears into the mountain. Now, she is alone in the cold, waiting for Joe to return with help. However, hours pass by, but Joe doesn't come back. Parker knows that the wolves must have gotten to him, but she still hopes for his safety. She stays there till the following morning, but he doesn't return. He must have bailed on her for ruining the boy's trip. Parker then moves around the seat, making the bolt move more aggressively. Eventually, the seat falls to the ground and lands right on top of her legs, breaking them. Parker composes herself and crawls downhill on the snow. 
After a while, she comes across the horrifying scene of Joe's remains. Before she can react, Parker notices a wolf in the front, but since the creature is full after devouring Joe, it doesn't attack her. Parker somehow makes it to the side of the road and lies there waiting for help. Eventually, a person brings her in their car and drives away. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.